And I find it kind of funny, I find it kind of sad The dreams in which I'm dying are the best I've ever had I find it hard to tell you, I find it hard to take The people run in circles, it's a very, very I'm Van. I'm sorry. And this is a sundown week. Ooh. Looking at the darker side of life. Shout out to the big homie and Dehereda. Doing songs with him. Shout out mm -hmm. to the big homie. Uh, I don't know how to do intros and stuff for him. <laughs> I've forgotten how for to For timely topical political <laughs> commentary, you can hit us up in Middle America, Vin and Sorry. If you, you dare listener, would like your song reviewed, it's very simple. 125 at the gate gets you straight to the head of the line. Or you can jump onto Patreon. Uh, One dollar at the gate gets you in at Patreon. You join an alliance, all that good stuff. Or if you're watching this, it means we just had a kid. We're on uh, hiatus, but we shall return very slowly, mm -hmm. but soonly. Uh, miss all our Patreon buddies, etc., 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 and everybody in the village. Shout out to the big homie Peter for being a sounding board for me, even even when I'm off. So I should have showed you the lyrics that Peter wrote. Yeah, you should. The second song. They're smart. They're smart. Oh, good. And I think like English is not its first language. Pretty crazy. Shout out to the big homie. Oh, okay. Um, we have a song that's coming out soon. Um, should be should be coming out pretty soon here. I was practicing today. Yeah, I heard you're practicing today. We're gonna finalize stuff, and so that's that's happening. So we're pretty happy about that. Uh, but nobody wants to hear our band right now. What we want to hear is Dear Agony by the band Breaking, Breaking Benjamin. Benjamin. Okay, here we go. And let's go.
Wow. That dude's going through it, bro. Yes. I feel so bad to enjoy some of these songs because they are very sad sounding, but at the same time, like, they're so great sounding. What the big homie say, Pop Smoke? He said, uh, turn your pain into champagne. <laughs> the bubblies. You know what I mean? Like, you make, you, you know. Uh, yeah, apparently this guy, he was like an alcoholic or whatever, and he, uh, this was like the first record they wrote, he wrote sober. Oh. Oh, really? Hmm. Yeah, and I think, like, that, you see that thing that's it's like his MRI, yeah. his brain scan, yeah. uh, he damaged himself somehow. From the alcohol? from alcoholism, yeah. Mm, you usually hear about it with the liver. Yeah, I've never heard it with the brain. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, so I don't, I don't, I don't know. The, the, the person who actually introduced me to this man was a Muslim dude. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to the big homie. He's, he's probably going to watch this because he's a... Big you weren't supposed to be listening to that, I believe. Yeah, yeah. he's a, he's part of like a very like very interesting little mini subculture. Oh, okay. Within within Islam, it's like all right, sure. Very interesting, very very interesting. It's it's one of those subcultures from an Islamic perspective that could only happen on the internet. Oh, okay. Yeah, you, they wouldn't get enough space to be able that to like work sense. out some of the things yeah. that they say. Yeah. But. Shout out to the big homie. Um, so this one, I felt like it could be taken two ways. Like one is like it's like the end of him, but at the same time, the way I was looking at it was like, dear agony, just like Gobi, like he wants to be rid of those feelings in the way that he feels. Yeah, the the pre course. He says, "Don't bury me." Yeah, yeah, he's trying to live. Like so, the pre course, yeah. I will find the enemy within. Yep. You know, so I feel because I can feel it crawl beneath so, my skin. So I, because he has an internal battle with his own alcoholism. You mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And whatever it is that's causing him to be an alcoholic is, yeah. is the, the right. Enemy, yeah, that's not true. Not necessarily alcohol itself, which yeah. You know, it, it, it's the both and type of situation. But yeah, like that. That's you know, one of, like you see a lot in metal, like a lot of expression of doom and gloom and things like that and you know a lot of it is because that's how they feel in the moment but you don't get a lot of like I'm gonna take accountability for myself type mm -hmm. type songs you know like I, it, I look at it him saying I'll find the enemy within as a way of taking accountability for his own issues yep you know and, and of course there's a lot of things that cause yeah I agree with that why you have destruct like taking accountability for yourself doesn't mean you blame yourself for everything mm -hmm. right it just means that if you grow up in the hood without a father and then you decide to sell drugs you could say yeah a lack of a father influenced me ending up on the corner but i still chose to end up on the corner right and you have to be able to right well i think that there's two different ways of finding the enemy within. There's one way of finding the enemy within that leaves you in a state of self-pity and doesn't actually help you. Right. And then there's another find the enemy within that empowers you to get out of whatever situation you're in. Right, right, right. And a lot right. And a lot of times this is something, you know, I really drill into the boys. Like a lot of times, you know, when people think about accountability, they think about blame and, and you know, most people do their best to, to, to offload the blame to other people. Yeah. And I'm like, to the degree that you do that is to the degree that you disempower yourself. So like this guy, like, yeah, I'm sure there's probably some horrible background or some horrible situation. I'm sure he didn't just wake up and say, you know what, I'm going to be an alcoholic today. Mm -hmm. like, I'm sure there are things in his life that, like, influenced him toward that direction. But at some point, you have to, you have to say, yeah, I had influences, but I made X and Y mm -hmm. decision, you know, because right. I remember, you know, We'd be all on the train, and we, me and my friends would talk. We would talk about this stuff. Like we would have these types of conversations. And people would be like, "Oh, we gotta sell drugs, blah blah blah." I'm like, "Man, we ain't doing none of that, bro. Mm -hmm. Like we're not selling any drugs. We're not joining any games. Like that's dumb." And they'd be like, "What are you talking about, bro? We in the hood. It's the only thing we know." Blah blah blah. I'm like, no, it's not the only thing we know. Like, what are you? Of course. I was saying that from my perspective because I was born in Jamaica, I lived in Maine, lived in Florida, I lived in New Jersey, so like I see. And you saw things. your mom working. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I think that a lot of these people, you know, their parents are the father's gone, the mother is. And the bigger thing for me is I saw my drugs. I saw my brother working. Yeah. So I had a I had an example had of a yeah. man who 
You know what I'm saying? Like he wasn't hustling. He and I there was no doubt in my mind my brother was gonna get out of the ghetto. Like that mm-hmm. was like just And he did. I was used to think like he, he was did. just staying there for us. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like you think he was? Oh yeah, that was a lot of it for sure. So like I never had this like, oh, you know, you know, we're we're just destined to be drug mules and gangbangers. I'm like, man, y'all mm-hmm. yeah, dumb as hell, bro. Mm-hmm. I'm like, we we can we can choose not to do that dumb shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And and you know. So and, and you know some of that was, it was about eighty percent true. I, I I look back at like some of the conflicts and altercations we got into or whatever, and I'm like, I don't know, man. This kind of felt unavoidable. <laughs> There's a couple of them that just felt unavoidable. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but you know everybody has that. Whether it's you grew up with a you know a alcoholic dad who beat the hell out of you, mm-hmm. and it's like a lot of people like, okay, well if you have that as an example, then. What do you expect the kid to do? Mm-hmm. Well, it depends. Some kids look at that and they go, man, screw that guy. I'm never going to be like my dad. You know what I mean? And you hear that a lot. Where it's mm-hmm. like, I just decided I was never going to be like my dad. And other people are just like, oh, that's all I was. So you get influenced, but you make those decisions. Yes. Some people say, I decided I was never going to be like my father, but then I yeah. turned out being just like him. Right. Well, it, it's because you have to. you have to be very, very purposeful about it. Steering yourself away from those. You, you, you have every, you have to be self. And I tell the boys this all the time. You know about toxic behavior. They have, they've got family members who, whatever. Mm-hmm. That you know, I'm sure if we laid it out in the cards on the table, they'd be like, "Holy shit, that's toxic." Mm-hmm. But like, so I have, you know, they, and I'm like, yeah, you say that growing up, you know, but you, if you're not purposeful about attacking. Those tendencies, you know, mm-hmm. like genetic or epigenetic, what spiritual, whatever you want to call them, those those inherited traits, like you've got to be double sure that you're not repeating that. Yeah. You know, because that's inside of you. Yeah. You know, so how if you want to look at it from a scientific, you know, genetic and epigenetic perspective, or if you want to look at it spiritually, it doesn't matter. Like it's it's it, whatever you hate about your parents or what they did or whatever, mm-hmm. that's inside of you. And so you have to be double and triple aware of that, and 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 expend the energy early so that you don't you don't end up in that situation. You know, I'm a big believer in like let's expend the energy early, and then we can cruise later on. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's a really inspiring line. I think I'll find the enemy within because I can yeah. feel it crawl beneath my skin. Yeah. <clears throat> I have nothing left to give. I found the perfect end. We were made to make it hurt. That's interesting. You were made to make it hurt. Disappear into the dirt. What did you think that's about? You were made to make it hurt. I just thought that it was just, you know, somebody in your life that... So I have nothing left to give. I found the perfect end. It sounded like that they were they had come to the end of themselves and then obviously they were... It sounded like they were going to kill themselves. But it says, you were made to make it hurt, disappear into the dirt. I just thought it was like somebody that like is in your life and the only thing that they do is increase your pain. Like that was what I thought of when I saw that. Yeah. Like, um, like disappear a, into the dirt. Like a kid or a baby. I'm just messing with her. It's a bad joke. Too soon. What? <laughs> Kids are pretty painful. They are. <laughs> They're not the only thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe he's talking. Maybe he's talking about his. <laughs> maybe he's talking about his favorite brand. What are you laughing at? Is it still that funny? It is because like I'm replaying my reaction to you saying that. I was like, what? Maybe, yeah. Maybe he's talking about his favorite brand of alcohol. Maybe you know. Maybe that you know. You know, sometimes it goes down. It's like ah, maybe, maybe disappear into the dirt. Mm. You were made to make it hurt. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go with that. I'm gonna say that he's he's thinking like there's nothing with them. You know how like there's certain. I, I was hearing somebody talk about this this weapon that they found or whatever, and she said, you know, this was a this was a little handgun or a pistol or whatever, and they were like, the only thing this thing can do is kill people. Right, like it's not a hunting rifle where you can, you know, you can look at a hunting Purpose rifle and say, hey, you sport. know, I'm, yeah. you know, she was like, this thing is only designed to kill people. Uh-huh. And there, there's some things that are like irredeemably bad. And I think sometimes, like, if you're an alcoholic, like, 
there you sometimes like you you cross a line where the thing is only bad right 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 like yeah for you it's right. irredeemably bad right so it's like mm -hmm. you were made to make it hurt it's like well not necessarily but the way that his relationship has been to alcohol that's pretty much mm -hmm. the only function that it has in, in his life right now. yeah yeah um, and it's really interesting. I have nothing left to give. People usually talk about that in relationships. Yes. And it's a weird, like, it's a weird thing. It, this, this happens, it, 11th Hour from Lamb of God was one of my, it's in the top three. I don't know, maybe it's in the top two. It's got the life and probably that song. But anyway, um, 11th Hour is about alcohol you know mm -hmm. the dark mistress and many beholden to none but it's interesting because the alcohol functions like a like a woman in the mm -hmm. song you know like yeah i mean the dark mistress of many beholden right to none. right my sweet demon so like it's it's really interesting like he's he's talking about like this relationship he's had with alcohol and it starts off with i have nothing left to give see if if I'm right about it. I didn't take it that way. When he said, I have nothing left to give, to me that sounded like, you know, like when people are on the verge of suicide and then they say, like, I, I can't, I'm not giving anything back to anybody. Like, basically, like, nobody needs me here. Like, I have nothing to offer. Like, I have nothing to give to the world. Mm -hmm. So, and even, like, it's, it's massive delusion. I, I think that there are... Maybe there's some random cases where someone like literally is not applying themselves at all and bringing any like sort of good to the world. Like I think that that is possible, but I think that like that's a choice that the person's making. Like I think that you can I think that everybody has the capacity to bring good to the world. But that's what it made me think of on that. It was like the person that's like at the end of themselves and so they're like I've nothing yeah, left I, to I, give. I'm I'm wondering. I'm not sure how I feel about that. What, that everybody has something to offer? No, yeah, I, yeah, I, no. I, I think, think everybody yeah, does. I think, just, I, think you're, I think you're right. I think you're right. Because, and the reason that I say that is because I believe that everybody was made in the image of God. And if you are in the image of God, the only right. way that you can reflect that image is if you are offering something to so You're good. out in the world, yeah. Right, yeah. so. No, 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 that's right. I'm with that. I'm with that. But, like, things can, I remember feeling like, I remember feeling at times like my life was over. Yeah. It was because I was in a relationship with this person, and this person just sucked the light completely out of you. And no matter what you heard on the outside, no matter what I heard about on the outside about how I was affecting people's lives, and oh, I'm so glad, you know, if you mm -hmm. wouldn't have had this conversation with me, I, I'd have killed myself, or blah, blah, blah. Like, it didn't matter because when, you know, I was in a relationship with this person, and it, and it obviously wasn't hitting them like that. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So to me, yeah. it was like, oh, you know. Well, they were I just, communicating I just the opposite. Too. I just couldn't accept it. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. because of just how everything was with that person. You know what I'm yeah. Saying? But, yeah. So yeah, people. It's, it's funny. Like people can make you feel like that too. Not just you know an addiction to alcohol mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. But then people kind of like have addictions sometimes to people that are not good for them. That's what I was thinking. I just wasn't gonna say it. Well, <laughs> and I don't. I don't have a problem. You know, in in this current, you know, whatever, because like I, I didn't have an addiction to this person. It was more like I made the commitment to the person. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I'm not gonna, you know, leave because it's it's hard or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, you know, yeah. I, I do think that people have addictions to like destructive relationships. Toxicity. They love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. yeah. And, and I think a lot of people like. You know they'll post they'll post crazy stuff that's like very toxic is a toxic trait but then they'll they'll be like oh you know if you text my man blah 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 i have this password i'm gonna slide in his dms and i'm gonna slide at your house and blah 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 it's like like really like if you have to be in that if if you have to operate that way to maintain your relationship like you're in a toxic relationship like it's a bad relationship like you shouldn't be in a relationship where you're like constantly spying and then you're and then your boyfriend is talking to this other girl and instead of confronting him you're going to go and show up at this girl's house. Like it's crazy to me. Yeah. But you're you're like that though. You're kind of toxic relationship wise. Like you're 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 pretty you're pretty you know. Yeah, I think You're like that though. Like sometimes I think, well maybe I wouldn't be this way if like you and I had been together from the beginning. 
But then I'm like, but I don't know because I doubt there that. are. <sighs> I doubt that very highly. I think it would have had like to be, be like worse. Go ahead. maybe would have had to be like really early because um, it, it's still like hard for me to grasp how you are. I mean, grasp how I like. Am. You, know, you always say stuff like that, and it always makes me feel like like I'm some like space alien or something like that. And I feel like well, I'm a pretty I, that, I feel like I'm a pretty normal person. Yeah, I don't. What I do don't you mean, think. like how I am? What are you talking about? Like, I feel like that, like a lot, and this might be like my negative view of men, but I feel like a lot of men and women, actually, I'm not even like just like narrowing it down to just men, but like, I feel like a lot of people are in relationships and they're not true to their relationship. So they're, you know, flirting with other people or they're like messaging, they're messaging other people, but it's like, a if their their other person were to read that, they wouldn't be comfortable with it. So people be deleting messages or like, you know, saying like too much to other people of the opposite sex that if, if their other person was saying it, they wouldn't be comfortable with it. You know what I mean? Like, or, um, you know, looking at pornography, like all these different things. Like you're up all hours of the night and like, but you're, I wish you, I wish you'd stay awake with me. Honey, that's unfair. I stay till 3 a.m. with you. Like, let's, let's like be honest with this conversation. Like, that's ridiculous to even be up till 3 a.m. It's not dishonest for me to say that I wish that's you'd stay. That's so gross. It's not dishonest to Why say I wish you'd stay. Why was that there? I have no idea. Oh. It, it's not, it's not dishonest to say I wish you'd stay mm. up with me. It's not dishonest. I'm not going to go into details, but there's a certain like, thing that nasties me right out. She's, she's got I don't want to say it because I don't want people to like, yeah, 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 yeah. get any ideas of, can you stop clicking on it? <laughs> it's so gross. Well, I feel hot. Stop looking at it, you weirdo. Well, how am I supposed to know that all of a sudden that's But anyway, be go ahead. The way, the way that, the way that I are, the way that I am, Lisa, yeah. the, the way that you are. <laughs> the way that you are, I, I feel like is not normal in lots of relationships. I feel like a lot of people are doing I think that the internet has made it so that way the type of people that we're not going to stay true are See, this not is, this is a funny thing about sorry right like sorry 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 handles all of our patreon right and the vast majority of our constituency are dudes so she makes it sound like oh you know you talk to girls blah 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 like her job on this channel is to talk to dudes and it's it, and she doesn't have any. Ah, but then, like, I have other jobs and other businesses where I have it, the the industry is dominated by women, so I talk to them. It's oh, you know, it's a big thing. And then she makes it sound like she's like conceding. I understand, you know, you have to do it for. Her. She makes it sound like it's this big thing. Meanwhile, like she's talking to dudes like all the time, and it's completely fine because it's her. Like you do that all the time. Yeah, that's not even what I'm talking about, though. I'm talking about. <clears throat> I was actually complimenting you, and you just flipped the whole thing weirdly. Well, not in And I'm really grossed out by what I saw. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> um, it's a you are, loss, you did flip it. It's a kind of a um, well, well, no, when you said the way that you are, and then you're like, and then you're like, you're up all hours of the night and you yeah, talk to girls. So no, the, the, no, 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 I didn't say anything. Doesn't talk look, to girls. Doesn't, it doesn't start out. I said well. you're, you're up all hours of the night, and I feel like, like lots of people would be like doing all these other things, and you're like studying. I don't feel like that you fit into the normal category. I feel like that lots of people. I think lots of dudes are like that. I've, and no, I would, and I no, I don't, I don't think so. I think that lots of people, and I'm not just saying dudes, but people are not true to their well, relationship. Well, you said something about like the internet. Something. Yeah, because I feel like that before before the internet, it was like okay, so if you wanted to have like this like secret little relationship. You had to like meet face to face with some the person or like remember like how the phones used to be like you could be on one. I'm phone. trying to see how this was going to be construed to something positive about because me. you're not like that. Like I I get like paranoid about stuff, but I know like that's like that my surfacey level is like I get paranoid because I don't want anything to happen with our relationship. But like deep down. Like, I know that I'm good, and I know that you're not, like... Well, there's that, and the fact that we are literally around each other for 24 it, hours. Yeah, but you say that, but it doesn't matter. Like, people can still do plenty, even though, like, 
I mean, I'm not sitting in the office. I need, office I need I'm to not with know. You I need to know the these people who could pull that shit off. You're around what somebody you for mean, 24 babe? hours in a day. No, we're not How around each other. You always say that, but we're really not. Like, I, we literally are. No, you're literally in this office for like 10 hours. It's there's a there's a door. Yes. So there would be no difference if I work outside the home versus inside the home. What do you mean there'd be no difference? Because you're saying, like, we're not together 24-7 because I work, I'm in this office. Okay, so, I don't know why you're being so weird. I'm Let me just talk weird. to the people. I'm not being weird, I'm just asking you. So, I think that, like, if somebody was an insomniac, you have plenty of time to have some sort of secretive relationship, sending pictures to each other, something like that. Like, you could do something like that in a night. Like, and delete the messages. You know what I mean? Like somebody could do those things, but you're like not like that. And maybe, maybe there's lots of people in lots of relationships that are true to their relationship. But then when you look at the numbers and you're like, what, 50% of marriages end in divorce, then it's like, well, I don't know. People... That's due to a lack of communication. It's not due to uh, people uh, so doing stuff. All do you time. think that, because a lot of times when people start out relationships with other people, they like do a lot of talking and there's like a lot of introspection and like oh you me like all oh, your thoughts and my thoughts and do you think that that's do you think that that's true that that is a lot of time no i don't i start? don't i don't think that i think relationships start people are auditioning and they're they're actually not their real selves and they're not very introspective they are trying to to be or project what they believe the other person wants from them that's what i think happens so then when you actually yeah. get to a relationship. Yeah, well, I think that that's true, yeah. And, and that's why it's like, oh, they're out of the honeymoon phase. It's like, no, like, they just took the mask off. This is who they really are. That's, they got, they looked around and they said, hey, I got this person. Whether it's a marriage commitment or anything else, they look around and they're like, I got this person. Why am I still doing this? And then they become their real self. But the whole thing started off with falsehood in the first place. So there's always that, and that's the reason why most relationships are horrible at communication and that's why I'm such a stickler for communication mm -hmm. because that, and that's why I'm always going to be a hundred percent communication is so exhausting sometimes that's why I'm going to be a hundred percent real about stuff no matter what it's gonna cause you know between us because it's I mean you know, I'm fighting for so like at this point in our relationship Vin will say something I get highly offended it doesn't really matter it, every single time, basically, I just get offended. I, I think we've I both... My feelings really hurt. I think we've both grown. Like, yeah, we have, like but last, still... You know, recently, I think we've, we've uh, made yeah, I've been a really trying. ton of progress. I just keep, like, swallowing that, like, my feelings are so hurt. Yeah, and I'm a hard person to communicate with because, like, that doesn't really resonate with me a lot. Like, the fact that your feelings are hurt doesn't mean to me that, that, that wrong has been done. Yeah, well... <clears throat> I think sometimes when you communicate, you're like just communicating the facts and it's not like, yeah, you're not like... Correct. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you'll get me really, really hurt and pissed off and then you'll call me like honey or sweetheart or something like that. Yeah. And then it makes me really, really emotional and then I have to try like to hold this whole like... <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing it on purpose. Oh, emotion. Yeah, I'm not doing it I don't it think you're doing it on purpose. But, yeah. Da, da, da. I always Go have on. such a funny reaction to that because sometimes it makes me really emotional and then other times I want to be like, don't freaking call me that! <laughs> yeah. Well, you kind of have that energy sometimes. I'm always confused. You know what I'm saying? Like, what is she doing? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so I don't know. Maybe you're writing this song to me. I'm, I'm your agony. That's no, good. that's not that's true. It's good to know. That's not true. What do you give the song? <sighs> Ridiculous, Steve. I keep rating all these high. I think 9.6. 8.8 for me. Kind of. This is a deep song, though. 8.8. .8. Then out. Sorry, out. Gone.